Hello and welcome to this video. So in this video I'd like to make a start on styling this a little bit so it doesn't look quite so random and awful on the page. The first thing we're going to do is change away from this default font here to a bit of a nicer one. If you search the Roboto font on Google, the first link you should come to is this Roboto Google fonts. If you go to there, you can select the various uh, styles you want from the Roboto font. In our case, I want to select the light 300, the regular 400, and the bold 700. And then in the link section on the right hand side here, you can see that we've got the CSS rules to apply and also this link here. So I'm going to copy this link, which has got a couple of links inside it, land back in the HTML and just paste in those links there. Now to make use of this, we need to add some styling. So in the static folder, I'm going to add a new file called styles.css. And then before we do anything else, we need to link to be able to use that styling sheet. So if I type link, It'll give me the option of link colon CSS and it already has styles, uh, style.css defined. So I'm going to put an S on the end there so we include our style sheet. Then what we're going to do is go into the style sheet and make a new rule and then flip back to the web and take this font family rule from here so we can start using that nicer font. So saving that, Going back onto the web page, you can see now that the font has changed into something that looks a little bit nicer. So now what we're going to do is some fairly simple stuff. We're going to make some updates to the site to make the styling look in general a little bit better. So the first thing is in the body, I'm going to add this background color, which is very dark gray and a sort of off white color for the text. So you can see the effects of the change on the right hand side here. Now the table is really squashed up so we can add some styling in for the table. So if I put some styling in where we select our table and tell it to occupy, please, the width of the page. I'm actually going to take that font size small off for now. We can add it in maybe later on. But you see now that the table is expanded to occupy the page. I'm going to move this in very slightly and this across so it's easier to see more of the website. The table is right up against the edge of the web page. So in the body here, I want to add some padding to the top, the left and the right, just so that we have a little bit more space around things. And we'll sort out the heading uh, later on. So concentrating on the table, the table headers, I would like to have a sort of gray background color like so. And now we load our data, you can see as it's starting to look a little bit better. It's not looking brilliant yet, but uh, it's looking a little bit better. The next thing to do is actually to add some borders around the table header and the table data. So if I just make a selector to actually select our headers and our data inside our table and arrange these brackets a little bit better, the first thing we want is a sort of off gray border of one pixel and solid that we can add around our tables. Actually, I'm going to expand this so we can see it a little bit better sort of in full screen and then I'll flick between the code and this. So whilst we have our borders like this, the other thing I'd like to do is I'd like to make sure that all of our text is always left aligned. I think it is by default, but we're going to force that in here. And the other thing we're going to do is make the cells look a little bit better by adding some padding around them in all directions. And you can see that the table is already looking uh, a lot better than it was looking before. Next thing to do is to deal with uh, this header here. So where we've got this hello beer and this load data here. Now, when we look at our HTML, I made a bit of an error at the end of the previous video and forgot to save the code. So I've loaded up what I think was the state on GitHub. Um, but you should have something like this message here, then the button, and then this div class table container here. What I'd like to do is make a new div with a class header. And then we're going to take our button and just cut it and paste it inside the header here. And I'm going to remove that message. Just before the button, we can type, uh, let's say H3, and we'll just put uh, 4x KPI like this for now. So if I save that and go back, we can see that we've got our heading looking a little bit better and our button still uh, below it there. So what I'd like to do, and the reason we've made this div is I'd like to move the button onto the right hand side and have in terms of vertical alignment, these exactly level each other, the heading and the button. So to do that, we can use flex, which we had a look at in the introductory video. So we can make a selector for our header then we can say we want the display as flex and we can say that we want to justify the content with space between. And that is the horizontal alignment, putting any space between the elements. That means the header, the text will be at the start and the on the left hand side and the button will be on the right hand side. We're going to do align items, which is vertical alignment centrally. So they're aligned with each other. And also just to align things a tiny bit at the top left with the heading in the table, we're going to put a four pixel padding on the left hand side. So going back into the website, you can now see that our load data has gone to the right hand side and our heading 
is on the left hand side. So that's the thing I'd like to do with for this video is just style the button a little bit. So back into the HTML here, you'll notice that the button now has a class equals button on it. I don't think that was there at the end of the previous video. And like I said, I got a bit confused as to where I was because I forgot to save it all. So if you don't have it, please add class equals button onto there. And we're going to use this selector then to style the button. So into our styling rules, first thing I'm going to do with the button is give it some padding and changed its text alignment. So the text is always in the center. I'm going to turn off any kind of text decoration and also give it a fixed font size of 14 pixels. So when we do that, we can see the button has changed quite a bit. I still don't like the sort of default colors and everything of the button, so we're gonna make some changes there. We'll make the background color a sort of light blue color. We're going to turn off the border, but we are gonna give it a border radius, which makes it look slightly rounded. So refreshing that, you can see now that we've got a button that looks a little bit better, I think anyway. Still, when we hover over it, nothing happens. When we click it, there's no sign that we've actually made a clicking action. So let's put something in for that as well. It's pretty simple stuff. We just have to select the button with colon hover. And then when we hover over it, then we just change the background color to something lighter. And we'll also switch the text from the uh, white color to this dark gray color. And there's a very, very similar technique, which you just use active instead of hover for when you've actually clicked the button. And then doing that will just change the uh, background to a lighter gray. Now you might find for some of these changes to take effect, you need to make a refresh or two of the uh, page because browsers, no matter what you do, really love caching uh, CSS. So now you see that the button is looking uh, a little bit different. I've noticed that the text color should be white here. So why isn't it white? And that's because I haven't actually dropped the style in to make it white. So we'll drop that color white in there as well. And now refreshing, you can see that we've got our load data on the right hand side. And when I hover over the load data, it goes, the text goes black and it goes light blue. And then when I click, we get this gray effect as well. So we know that we've clicked the button. Okay then, so we've made quite a bit of progress. I think things are looking a lot nicer than they did at the start of the video. We still got a little bit more to do. And I also like to have the data sort of updating continuously. And we'll start all that in the next video. So thanks very much for watching and questions, comments, welcome as always on YouTube.